Hi guys, Paul here from PA Brew News. A very happy new year to everyone for 2021. Uh, interesting start for me for 2021, but hopefully everyone has having a good new year. So we have a Fuller's Vintage Ale from 2016, completing the five-year seasonal that I usually have been doing for the last couple of years. This is their 2016 for the 2021 review and this has been brought to you by the great matt so thank you very matt matt from florida sent this up to me i couldn't find the 2016 he did and he sent it to me so very 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 thank you very much thank you thank you thank you very much 8.5 alcohol by volume of course a couple different changes have happened uh fuller smith and turner since different brew uh, master for a while which i believe she is gone now but bought out Ayashi, I believe, something like that. So, I mean, there's a couple different uh, things that have happened to Fuller, Smith & Turner, for sure. So we're just going to use the big old glass. Get that in a little bit. Let this do its thing and brief. So right now we have the 2016 vintage here. Uh, in this 2016 vin uh, vintage ale, we've used Nelson Savan hops, a hop style which was being developed when we brewed our first vintage ale there you go back in 1997 since then this aromatic new world hop has pioneered new flavors in beer and is a, a fitting addition to this milestone vintage ale recipe absolutely vintage ale is uh, available as a limited release and individually packaged and numbered in bottles of course and then you can set it down for years vintage blah blah blah, blah, blah. so there we go 8.5 by the volume, as I said before. So thank you very, very much, Matt. Awesome stuff. There it is. And that's going to go on to the wall of vintage ales that I have now. So we're just going to put that right there. Here's the vintage ale bottle. The nice full English style bottle. There you go. That's nice. I like that. Very happy pappy. Let's throw the rest of it in. We're just going to go full on. Big ass glass. Throw all of it in. A little bit of sedimentation back at the bottom of the bottle. John Keenan was still the brewmaster at the time. Very nice. The Griffin Brewery down in uh, near the Thames. So awesome stuff. Uh, Chiswick Lane. Yeah, Chiswick, Chiswick Lane, South London, near the Thames. Fullers.co.uk, the Griffin Brewing Company, I guess. Uh, Fuller Smith and Turner PLC, which again is a, a sub-owned sub by somebody else. I think Ayashi or something like that by now. But there we go. And doo -doo -doo -doo, uh, number uh, bottle number... 131100 so 13100 uh, let's say there we go 8 8.5 8. alcohol by the volume we've said that again bottle conditioned of course real good shit let's see if we got a little we're listening to the deep soundtrack right now just got done watching the deep on it's got a uh, 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 all right whatever just got done watching the deep on uh Nevada. and i'll tell you what bad i don't know if i'm gonna be ever watching it again but i own it on dvd vhs and soundtrack now so there you go anyway so up to the light beautiful kind of orange orange caramel hues all through the glass murky brown in the, in the center but just lots of orange caramel hues slightly off white head nice alcohol leg sticking from that 8.5 percent alcohol by volume a little bit of tight bubbles creamy top rocky top to this head a little bit of bigger bubbles on the side Bobbles, bubbles on the side. Not really too much protein stick to the side of the glass. Let's get aroma. Cheers. Hmm. Mm, interesting. A little bit of a soft, soft burnt caramels. Little confectionery sugar sweetness, but very, very, very subtle. Floral tone, spicy earthiness. Something that reminds me of a very, very muted grapefruit coming, coming through there. Don't get that. I don't usually. I remember when I smelled these, I would get more of a like a orange marmalade tonality this one i'm getting like muted stale it's that that new england hop that's you know wow well five years later not so wow uh in a, in a, in a beer that's why we don't use we use traditional i don't know whatever but uh 
Yeah, I'm not getting or orange marmalade, things like that. I'm getting more just like a little bit of an older, stale, uh, kind of that grapefruit, a little bit of a, you know, the white grape kind of Nelson Sylvain kind of character, a little stale version of that. Mixed with some burnt caramels, earthiness, touch of brown bread. Cheers. Again, muted, a little hint of a muted floral, a little bit of muted grapefruit kind of quality, wafting around the palate still. Very muted, very stale. You get a little bit of a burnt caramel toffee tone, a little bit ahead of a brown bread, but very subtle. A little bit of earthiness wafting through the back of the palate. Just a lot of just uh, toasted, older, like, kind of just mildly okay beer i don't know damn why you fuck with things <laughs> you shouldn't fuck with things <laughs> yeah usually this thing is just zinging and singing and this not so much okay so there is still a little bit of uh savor caramel way in the background wafting through you can get it Bring it to the front foreground. Very nice. Strange hit of something that reminds me of a vanilla. Very subtle. I have got like a beautiful sticky butterscotch caramel before from these. Orange marmalade I've got from these before too. Really nice brown sugar tonalities I've gotten from these, which is nice too. This one, I'm getting a little bit of caramel. Savory caramel. A wafting rind of a grapefruit quality that keeps coming back and back and back as I as I talk about it. A little bit of a vanilla, a hint of brown bread, a little bit of earthiness wafting through the back of the palate. A lot of burnt sugars. Yeah, not just burnt sugars. There is a subtle nuance in the back, but there's a little bit of savory tonalities wafting back there going, hey, we're not with these guys, we're just back here doing our own thing, that kind of thing. But the, uh, that kind of muted hop tone is in the front going, hey, look at me, I don't know how to do anything. Yeah, it's one of those kind of things. Like, yeah, we know you're there, just shut up. Shut up, Ralph. Shut up, Keith. One of those kind of things. The malt base is really lacking to make this a great vintage ale, which I've had great vintage ales from this company. Something about this malt base and the hop profile, they're just working against each other in just a weird way. And, and whatever is nice and kind of cunning coming from the malt base is getting slammed down by the stale notes from these hops, from this, those new world hops. Um, and yeah, what is in the malt base is in the background going, look at me, look at me, look at me. I can't. There's assholes in front of you. Like, stand on a chair, that kind of thing. Um, but what is kind of in the foreground of the malt base, too, is still just lackluster. It's like a little subtle burnt sugar, so subtle, subtle brown bread kind of, kind of things going on, but it's so subtle. And this weird hop, kind of stale hop vibe is kind of going over everything. It's a really poorly made beer. It probably was really nice fresh. But the point of a vintage ale, here's where I go. Here's my little soapbox. The point of a vintage ale is to put it down for years. To keep coming back and getting it better and better and better and better with age. So you better be using hops that's not going to muddle up the process. Like New World hops and all these things. Like what these, I don't know what the fucking Greta Gershwin. I don't know what her fucking name was. But she started using all these weird like, oh, dry hop it with it. Like, fuck off. <laughs> you know what I mean? No. It's just traditional shit. Fuggles, like Kent Goldings, East Kent Goldings, Fuggles, huge malt base. And you're done. 
like every other good fucking veggie gel I've ever had from these guys. But now this one doesn't taste right. And I'm assuming the, the proprietors after this, or the, 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 the progenital lineage, or I don't know, fucking whatever you want to call it, is the, the you know, the 17, 18, 19, they've all been fucked with like that. So they're all going to suck, <laughs> basically. They were probably nice fresh, but they were probably a bit too boozy. So the, because it's an 8.5 traditional style ale, they don't hide the booze very well. So you want to have it with little... A bit aged so that the malt base shines through and the booze kind of calms down. You can enjoy it so much. So, putting a bunch of fresh hops so you can drink it fresh so it tastes better, but you're gonna get bombarded with all this booze, so you're not gonna like it so much. Blah, 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 blah. You know, it's one of those kind of deals. So, fuck all these people and fuck 2021 so far. <laughs> hey, start off on a shitty note. I think this is gonna be a, a continuing trend, despite what people some people think. So, anyway. Not the worst thing I've ever drank. Definitely a drinkable beer. Just not extremely enjoyable, especially considering some of the ones that I've had in the past with five years on them. It's not like because they were super old or this or that. Yeah, 2009 still resonates hard for me. But it's okay. It's an okay beer. It's okay. It's an old beer. That's all this is, right? This is just a a old malt based forward IPA because of what they all the hops that they try to throw in this, which is just pointless and stupid. It should have never been done. That kind of thing. So um For an old I for an old malt based uh, malt based forward IPA, I guess I'll give it a seven. Seven out of ten. It's not bad. It's definitely a lot of worse more worse things I could drink. But it's not good not a good beer so anyway and it completely hides the 8.5 so that's nice so the vintage ale 2016 for my 2021 new year's review poo poo to you good sir so anyway this is paul for beer brutus cheers watch that maker here it comes bye bye